Our next speaker is someone, in all seriousness, who has changed my life through his book called Body by Science, which I have right here, my personal copy. He's also the owner and operator of Ultimate Exercise, a personal training facility in Seneca, South Carolina. And he recently filmed a show with Tony Robbins called Breakthrough with Tony Robbins, or Anthony Robbins, same thing. More than that, though, I've said something about him that I believe to be 100% absolutely true. I've said it on the internet, and I've said it, I said it at our convention in Stockholm, and I talked about this book, that Doug is one of the wisest men of our time, and so underappreciated and undervalued, it's almost indescribable. With that said, Doug, would you sign my copy of Body by Science? Be happy to. Appreciate my, it. My honor. Thank you, Appreciate Doug. It. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. Guys, thank you. The first thing I want to tell all of y'all is um, how lucky you are. Um, if I could imagine being 21 years old um, and being able to come to a convention like this and to have had the opportunity to listen to Mark Sisson to get workout advice from Drew Bay and Bill De Simone, people that you're going to be hearing. Um, if I would have done two things with that, number one, had the opportunity to have heard it, and number two, to have actually listened to it, um, it would be really amazing how much more quickly and better my life would have progressed. There is so much that I did with my intense interest in working out um, that even using the cutting edge technology of the day was just leading me down a very wrong pathway. I came out of the whole Arthur Jones Nautilus high intensity training camp, which was a definite move in the right direction, but it was a fairly high volume of work doing, you know, 15, 20 different movements to complete muscular failure and beyond three days a week. And I did this religiously all the way through college, med school, residency, and adulthood into my late 30s, early 40s. And truly through most of that time, felt like hammered dog shit. Okay, I was really tired. And I did it all the way through med school and residency. Every other night call, three days a week, I was there, I did it, and I felt like crap. If I could have really been able to have been exposed to this and wrap my brain around the minimal amount necessary to trigger the adaptive response that I was looking for and then get out of the way. Um, the experience of all of that, of college, of med school, of residency, of getting married, of having children, all of that would have been on such a higher plane because I would have been experiencing it in a much more recovered and a better feeling way. Now, You've already um, heard Mark Sisson speak, and he has really been at the spearhead of the primal diet or the Paleolithic diet. I really don't have anything to add in terms of what he's saying, other than later, I'm gonna flip this over, I'm gonna drag you guys through med school biochemistry, and I wanna provide you with an intellectual understanding of why everything that Mark told you is correct, okay? And as a physician, I can tell you, 80% of what Mark Sisson told you goes very severely against the grain of standard medical practice. But he's right, and I'm gonna show you that he's right, okay? Um, you're also gonna get the opportunity after me to hear Drew Bay talk, I'm gonna let him give you the nuts and bolts of how to work out, okay? What I wanna give you guys is the why. If you can understand the why, you'll be able to embrace the how. And the basic thrust of the talk that I wanna give you today is I want you to do two things. 
I want you to not overtrain, and I want you to eat like Mark Sisson told you to. Okay? Um, at this point, I want to take a little segue and preface everything that I'm going to tell you guys today in a certain context, because when I got here, I actually ended up arriving late because my flight in last night got canceled. I came in in the morning. I got here around 10 o'clock or so, and I decided to pop in on one of the dating talks. And it occurred to me that you guys are all here for self-improvement, to improve your life in every facet, um, to be better physically, to be better mentally, to be better intellectually, and to pursue the best woman that you can find. That's what the game's about. But what I want to tell you is all this drive for self-improvement that we're all about, that we all embrace, I got to tell you, it's not about us. And we need to understand that very clearly. Okay? Everything that we are here to do today is driven by DNA. Okay? DNA is a self-replicating hormone. Its only purpose in the world is to make Xerox copies of itself and propagate itself into the future. Okay? You, your brain, your body, your mind, your soul, every bit of you is viewed by DNA as a leased vehicle. Okay? It is using you as a vehicle to transport itself forward into the future. And all of your behaviors and all of your desires are driven by that. Okay? And that comes to bear out in the kind of workout you do and the kind of diet you eat. And I heard all sorts of advice on you know, how you're going to initially walk up and speak to a woman. But the story of DNA is true for her as well. And one of the things that people are assessing when they're trying to assess the attractiveness of a mate or whether you're going to even get your foot in the door is your genetic fitness. Her DNA is assessing your DNA. And you've seen it before. You've seen a really buff, handsome guy in the club approach a girl and get the cold shoulder. And you've seen a guy that's not so buff, pretty skinny, doesn't really have great posture or great dress, walks up, hits a home run. <coughs> you can ask yourself, why is that? Well, it has a lot to do with DNA because the instantaneous assessment that someone is making of you is trying to assess the health of your DNA relative to theirs and the success of propagation into the future. You're being sized up in an instant. And if you wonder why a technique that worked so well on one person didn't work on another, it's because it wasn't the technique. Many, many times is not the technique. Okay? I don't know if you know this. Women will probably confirm this for you. They've made their decision about you before you've ever said a word. And a lot of times they've made it by smell or by sight. Your DNA encodes on it genes for something called a human leukocyte antigen, or HLA. And you have a particular combination of HLA genes, human leukocyte antigen genes. And as a consequence of your particular genotype, you have a particular constellation of HLA antibodies. And so does she. And if she has antibodies to your HLA genotype, it doesn't matter what you say or what you do or how smooth you are, it's not going to fly. Your foot will not even get in the door. And you're going to beat yourself up over it, and there's no need to bother at all. Which I did like one premise of his talk in particular was to lower the expectations and just try a lot, because it's a numbers game. Whether you're successful or not has very little to do with your approach and a lot to do with your DNA and her DNA. So make a lot of approaches and don't be afraid of failure. 
And I'm going to get crass here for a second, but Drew knows a guy that invented the, the Nautilus machines and the MedEx machines that I use in my training facility. His name was Arthur Jones. Um, he was a chauvinist pig extraordinaire, but he had a great saying, and he actually said it to my wife, who uh, was very attracted to him, and he was 81 at the time. He said, you know, in my life, he says, I've learned to just walk up to women and ask them if they want to fuck. He says, I've been slapped a lot. He goes, but I get fucked a lot, too. <laughs> so roll the dice, gentlemen. Um, if there's one book I could recommend that you read to put your dating efforts in a proper context, it would be a book called The Red Queen. And it is written by a scientist named Matt Ridley. And it's on the evolutionary biology of sexual behavior. You will learn more about yourself, you will learn more about women, and your approach to them by reading that book and learning how birds and bees and chipmunks and squirrels do it and why they do it and what predicates certain behaviors, how you tell the difference between a gold digger and a cuckolder. Um, and everything that you can learn about any, any subject is best viewed in the context of evolutionary biology. And the same is true of exercise, so that's what I'm going to go into next. First, we're going to talk about not overtraining.